ان الحمد لله نحمده نستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله واصحابه وسلم اما بعد فان اصداق الحديث كتاب الله وخير حد حد محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشرب امور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته part of what we read brothers and sisters you hear it every friday the sermon that is said even when people open up when they are addressing certain classes and durus sometimes it's important that we stop and reflect on this sermon which has been titled as the sermon of haja qutbatu haja which has a chain which is mutawatir reached the level of being a recurrent chain that it makes it impossible for it to be fabricated and it is something that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam would say and if we reflect truly we will see how this deen it always encourages the believer to remain humble because in the khutbah to haja not only do we praise allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but we also begin to beseech allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his aid and for his support and most importantly we seek his forgiveness because we are a nation that will constantly make mistakes we are a nation that will constantly fail we are a nation that will constantly make mistakes and blunders so we seek refuge not only with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but from the evil that we possess in the qutb at hajj the prophet sallallahu mentioned two things the evil from within our own selves and the evil from the actions from our actions so we know that this qutb at hajj shaykh taymin mentioned proves that the nafs can have evil okay that the nafs the soul can have evil because the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam sought refuge from allah from the evil within our own selves and the evil from our actions then the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he solidified by saying whomsoever allah guides there no one can misguide and whomsoever allah subhanahu wa ta'ala misguide there is no one who can guide and this is not a talk about the qutb at haja but i wanted to just take a reflective moment bismillah before going into today's topic which i hope and i know it's not going to stop and i know it's not going to cease but for me this is a farewell for me this is good riddings for me this is goodbye so for me this is going to be the end for nafis abu zaid in regards to the toxic community among the muslims is none other than the salafi sect and for you go off and for you go crazy before you start to make up statements and say things about me or this particular talk that you did not listen to and you just read the title and you thought that I was speaking down or ill about the da'wah as-salafiyya or the salaf as-salih then you are incorrect and then you are misunderstanding and you have misconstrued what is intended in this particular talk and by this particular title so I would like to explain the title first so that we can get a better understanding of what you're getting ready to walk into. None the less I want you to understand that there is a sect brothers and sisters that is known as the Salafi sect. And I'm not talking about those who are here to the Dawah to Salafiyyah and those who try their best and their utmost to strive according to that of the Salaf al-Salih. 
I'm not talking about them. There's two different entities. I am talking about a group of individuals who are known as the Hizbul Salafi. They are known as the Salafi sect, and I have an imam who is in precedence for me of making this statement. And it's not just my statement, and it's not me making a hukum, a ruling on anyone. This is specifically I have an imam. As Iman Ahmed, he says, do not take a position except that you have an imam preceding you in that position. I have an imam preceding me with the terminology in the term of recognizing that there is a Salafi sect. And wallahi to wallahi, wallahi, I have witnessed them with my own eyes. And some of you have as well. And they have been wreaking havoc on this community and many communities at large. And they have spread from America from the UK, from the different African subcontinents, they have spread over with this filth and this ilk of this pure pristine knowledge that only they possess and the faham, the understanding that only they possess and the scholars whom they hold clings dear to and they change like sneakers that they are only pristine and pure for only those whom they follow and ascribe to that this dawah of theirs have been a havoc, toxic dawah. And it is the most toxic of the communities amongst the Muslim communities. And you might say, what about the Shiites? You might say, what about the... <coughs> what about the Ahmadiyya? What about... Ahmadiyya is not even considered a set amongst the sets of the Muslims anyway. But you might say, what about all of the different deviant groups that are out there? What about them? No, ain't they the most toxic? No. They're not the most toxic. Because their hal is wadih. Their hal is clear, meaning their condition is clear. The evidence both in the kitab was sunnah has aligned against them. It's not hard to see that. That they have went against those things. But when you have a group of individuals in the cloak and in the garment, in the disguise of Salafiyya, who might quote those Preston sheikhs that we actually, you know, revere, Right, and they might quote from the books of Sunnah, and they might quote the Kitab, and they might quote those Ahadiths, but at the same time, they have a blind fanaticism, they have an ideology that they actually attack, that they hold on to, and whoever crosses their understanding, whoever crosses their opinion, whoever doesn't fall in with their line, is off it. Wallahi to Allahi, Wallahi, it is off it. This is something that we need to understand. This is what I mean that they are the most toxic community. And I dare anyone today to challenge me on this. The Salafi set is the most toxic community amongst the Muslims. They lack fiqh. A tremendous hadith that the Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith of Muawiyah. He says, Men, you read Allah who be he khayr, you faqihu fi deen. Whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants good for him, he gives them fiqh of the deen. There are many shuruhat explanation from many of the scholars who have explained this illustrious hadith from the scholars of the past and the present. And they have touched on the most key component is that the person has faham of the sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has faham of Allah's legislation. He has faham of Allah's ahkam, his rules and regulations. He has faham of the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu These individuals lack that thick it is in the way that they deal with one another you can see that they lack it it is the way that they deal with others that are not amongst them you can see that they lack that thick it is the way that they do not show compassion amongst themselves you can see that thick and as we should see inshallah ta'ala in today's talk the ayats are clear and crystal and pristine and we can see that the salafi set have colored outside of those lines. They are not working with these ayats. They are not working according to these ayats. And they are not working according to the ahadith of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, even though they claim it. And this is where we have to now be shrewd. This is where we now have to use the God-given sense that Allah has given us. We have to realize that if it's a people who are fanatic and they are blind and clinging to that, then you move yourself away. Because that's not what the Prophet وسلم, came with. And that's not what the sunnah actually encourages. And that's not what the deen which is being expressed from Allah Sharia in the kitab is understood. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim Inna al-ladheena farraqu deenahum wa kanu shi'an lasta minhum fi shay'in Innama amruhum ila Allahi thumma yunabbi'uhum bima ya kanu yaf'aloon In Surah An'am which is one of my favorite surahs because it's a tremendous surah of At-Tawheed and it also gives us the ammunition to fight against shirk and the mushrikeen, polytheists and those of the polytheists. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he tells Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, indeed those individuals who divide and split and break up their deen, I want you to pay attention now, and they break their deen up, inna ladina farraku deenahum, they break their deen up, because as Ibn Qayyim so eloquently put it, if your Lord is one, and if the book is one, and if the Sunnah is one, then how cannot you be one? How cannot if the tariq is one, then how cannot you be one? Think about that. This is in alignment when Allah says, Allah says, hold together all of you collectively and do not become divided. Allah also says, Allah also says, important is, Shara Lakum. Indeed, I have legislated for you that which I have legislated to the prophets. And then he mentioned those prophets. But then at the end of mentioning those prophets, what do Allah says? And aqimuddin wa la tafarraqu fi. That you become what? That you hold firmly to the deen and you do not divide therein. You do not divide therein. Why is this important? Because Allah says, Inna ummatukum ummatun wahida wa ana rabbukum. Allah Jalla says in Surah Anbiya, Indeed, this ummah. The Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is one Ummah. It's not two. It's not three. It's not four. It's one Ummah. And I am your Lord. Do you not understand? So the Ummah of Allah Jalla is supposed to be one. Not two. Not three. Continue with this verse. Allah says, Lasta, tell him Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Minhum fi shay. You have nothing to do with any of them. This is our position. With the Salafi sect. This verse here shows you your position. Even though Allah is addressing Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam directly, the ulama of tafsir, they said that whenever we have a verse where it's directed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it also can apply to his ummah. Do you not understand? Even though the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is being addressed, it, lasta min hum fi shay, you have nothing to do with them. Those who stand outside and divide their deen, separate it as if Allah is not our Lord, as if the book is not supposed to govern us, the book of the, uh, the kitab is not our book, as if the sunnah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is not our sunnah. Those who do that, you have nothing to do with them. Allah continue. What can Shia and they break up into schisms and they break up into parties and they break up to groups and they break up into sects. We're going to talk about that, inshallah ta'ala, in another verse in Surah Al Rum. We're going to go over that with Shirk with mean explanation, hopefully, in this talk. And we can see how the Salafi sect went outside of this line. He says, Inna amruhum ilallah. Look what Allah Ta'ala tells Muhammad. Sallam. Don't even busy yourself with them. Don't even concern yourself with them. Indeed, their affair is with Allah. Indeed, the affair of these individuals who have broken up into schisms and parties, their affair is with Allah. Allah Jalla will do what? Then Allah will inform them of that which they have done. Then Allah will inform them. They're not getting away with it, brothers. They're not getting away with it, sisters. Allah will inform them. That brother that separated from his brother because of this nonsense. That sister that separated from the sister because of this nonsense. That husband that separated from his wife because of that nonsense. And vice versa because of the nonsense. They are not getting away with it. Allah will inform them what they did. Allah will inform them what they have done. Yes, he would. Allah will bring them to account. They are not getting away with nothing. Don't believe it. They are not getting away with nothing. This is why they have to go around and report their numbers. We have so many people who took shahada. Who cares? We have so many people who are who attended the da'id or attended this or attended that or the classes and the lessons. This is all hype. Who cares? Why are you doing that? Well, Allah Jalla wa Ala is the one we're doing this for. Not for the numbers and prolific. Who does that? You won't find any of the salaf. From the past to now, from the people who are here and follow the salaf. You will not find them reporting how many people came to their classes unless it was something of documentary, but it was not something to promote. 
I'm not on Twitter running around saying we got this many people or that many people. You have to understand what's going on here. This is a strategy and it's, it's a strategy. Okay? And this is not just an attack, but you get tired. So this is a good riddance for me because I see it. And inshallah ta'ala, I'm going to highlight it for you so that you can see it as well. Allahu Jalla wa Ala, he says in Surah to Rum, Surah to Ayat, the Surah of the Signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says in this Surah min ayatihi kathira. And many verses Allah said from among his signs, etc., 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 right? But Allah Jalla wa Ala, he says, فَعَكِمْ وَجَهَكَ لِلدِّينِ حَنِيفًا he says, so set your face straight and directly towards the deen Hanifa. This is the only deen that Allah will accept, brothers and sisters. This is the deen that is upright. This is the deen that Allah Jalla wa'ala is in control. Not Amr, not Zaid, not Muhammad, not Abu Bakr. La, Allah Jalla wa'ala is in control. All right? Set your face strictly to him, Hanifan. Don't climb towards this. Don't incline towards that. As Sheikh Salih Fuzan explained the definition of Hanif. He says that a person, what? He turns his direction towards Allah only and he doesn't incline towards shirk or inharaf. He doesn't do deviation from that which is correct. He only turns towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is the deen of Ibrahim alayhi salatu salam. Allah continues. Fitrat Allah lati fatura nas alayha. Allah jalla said, this is the natural disposition. This is the natural disposition which Allah has created all mankind upon. This is the natural disposition. Allah says, continuing. La tabadila li khalqillah. You won't find no changing in Allah Jalla wa'ala creation. You will not find anything. La tabadila li khalqillah. Thalika deen al qayyimu wa lakin akthar al nasi la ya'alamun. This is the straight right deen, but most people don't understand. This is the part we're going to focus on. Allah Jalla wa'ala says afterwards, Munibina ilayhi wa takuhu wa aqimu. And these next verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala highlights something very important. I have to mention to us that Allah created us all upon a natural disposition. That we all have a fitra, Muslim and non-Muslim alike. Allah Jalla wa Ala now warned us of staying away from those things which breaks us away from this fitrah. Staying away from those things which doesn't. But he mentioned the characteristic of those who embrace this fitrah. And the characteristics of those who turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in repentance. Munibina ilay. They turn to Allah Jalla wa Ala in repentance, brothers and sisters. They are those who are repentant. They are humbled. Not the Salafi said. They don't have no mistakes. Everyone off it but them. You haven't heard them retract one statement. I'll wait. You haven't heard them retract one statement. They use their min bars to talk about people. They speak ill of people. They use their min bars when the min bar is not even made for that. They use the min bars. They use their pulpits. They use their Eid khutbas when they ain't supposed to be made for that nor it's supposed to be addressed that to speak ill of another Muslim. This is what they do. They attack. They use their websites. They use their Twitters. They use every platform they have to speak ill of individuals. This is what they do. You don't find this. Munibina ilayhi. They turn to Allah reflective. Why? Because they i'tiraf bidhnubi anfusihim. Because they are those who recognize their own sins. They recognize their own flaws. As Allah Jalla wa'ala says elsewhere in this book, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what? Wastaqimu ilayhi thumma staqfiru. Meaning stand upright to Allah, then seek forgiveness. Sheikh Charlie Fuzan, Allah says what? Because taqsir labut. Meaning that each and every one of us will have a deficiency and a flaw. It must occur. Something that must occur. So Allah Jalla wa'ala is not telling you to be perfect, but He's telling you to repent. How many people actually does that? They're reflective, brothers and sisters. Allah says this is the characteristic of those who recognize their fitrah. That munibina ilayhi. What else do they do? Wa'aqimu salat. They establish the prayer. Why do they establish the prayer? Because it's an alaqa. It's a connection between them and their Rabb. And as long as they have this connection between them and their Rabb and them and their Lord, they have what? They have the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are in a state of dhikr with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They have realized they need to be humble and they don't put themselves above anyone because they understand Allah is above them. And your Lord doesn't oppress anyone. Continuing. Then Allah Jalla wa ala, after mentioning this, Allah says, so those individuals who embrace their fitra and who have these redeeming qualities, they cannot under no circumstances resemble 
or be like those who are polytheists because they don't have these qualities because they don't recognize their fitra because they go against their fitra so they cannot be like them under no circumstances Allah says wala takunu min al mushrikeen don't be like those who are mushriks they can't be like them brothers and sisters they can't Allah says those who have separated and divided their deen وَكَانُوا شِيَعَانَ They became parties and sets and schisms كُلُّ بِمَا لَدَيْهِ كُلُّ هِزْبٍ Each his, each party from amongst them is what? Is happy and rejoice with that which they are upon Pay attention to this tafsir Because a lot of times we forget all of this What does it mean? Brothers and sisters فَرَّقُوا دِينَهُمْ بِاِخْتِلَافِهِمْ فِيمَا يَعْبُدُونَهُ Meaning that they differ in regards to the things that they worship Alright And they become parties Meaning they are groups They break up into groups Each one from amongst them Is rejoicing at that which they are upon They are happy with it He said that this is the description And the quality of the people who are polytheists And it is a brain worthy description From among the things of being of shirk Is that you don't remain on the same deen from the qualities and description of a person who practices shirk, they do not remain on the same deen. There are many deens at the end from amongst them. They don't remain on the same thing, brothers and sisters. That's from the qualities of it. That each one of them has a, 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 a deen and a part or analogy in a way. For from among them you'll find those who worship stones. From among them you'll find those who worship the sun. Others you find them worshiping the moon. And then you will find those who worship a tree, etc. And it goes on. Then you will find that they have different routes that they go about establishing their worship. Okay, they have different ideologies to establish that they travel upon. So they divide their religion. This is the thick that I tell you the Salafi set lack. How can you stream from the top of your lungs that you are upon the Kitab, you are upon the Sunnah? And the Lord is your Lord, and Muhammad is your prophet, but you are divided. Oh, uh, wait. This is why you don't understand fiqh. How can you scream that from the top of your lungs and you are at war with another brother or another masjid or another organization that is screaming exactly the same thing? Do you not hear what Allah said? Laysa til Yahudu ala shay wa laysa til Nasara ala shay. وَهُمْ يَتْلُونَ الْكِتَابِ Do you know how Allah said that? That the Jews are not upon nothing. Right? That the Jews will call it Yahud. They say to the, the Jews, say to the Nasaris, لَيْسَ تِلْ عَلَى شَيْءٍ That you are not upon anything. And the Christians, they say in turn, back to the Jews, you are upon anything. But yet they study the same book. Yet they recite the same book. Does that make sense? So if Allah is making that a problem, that they study and claim to hold on to the same book, how much more so for us talking about we hold on kitab with sunnah fahm and salaf and we arguing and bickering just like they do? Do you not get the point? Where's the fiqh? Tell me where's the fiqh at in that? Where's the fiqh? There's no fiqh there, you see? Because Allah Jalla wa'ala censored them for that. Allah Jalla wa'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah, pay attention. They don't have no fiqh to understand this. The shaykh, he continues. He says, He says, so therefore, it is important that the Islamic ummah, that they do not divide or separate in their deen. For the Jews and the Christian, they divided their deen. The Jews, they divided into 71 sects. And the Christians divided into 72 and the mushrikun, al jahiliyun, those who are ignorant, hadith wa la haraja fil iqtirafihim, fa'aulai farraku deenahum, wa deenahum ayadinuna bihi. And you find that the mushrikun, they are those who did what? They are the ones who have innovated that this has occurred. There's no difficulty with them concerning their difference. Alright, these are people who have divided their deen. Their deen is whatever they practice. So, wa'u kana yadinuna li makhluk. And no matter whether or not their deen is something that they practice towards uh, the creation or the created according to 
or a creator according to their um, imagination or what they claim or pretend to be their creator. Because the polytheists, they say about their Ali, had their deities, we do not worship except to bring them closer to Allah, except to seek a nearness closer to Allah. He said that these are a group of people, another group of people who worship the same thing that which they worship from the Aliha, their deities, not to bring them closer to Allah. Rather because they believe that they are Aliha. Except that none has the right to be worship except for that thing that which they worship that's according to them. What does it mean that Allah says they can Shia? Shaykh they mean breaks down the definition of Shia. He says that Ya'ani Firaqa. Firaqa, brothers and sisters, is breaking up into sets and schisms. He says that the origin of Tashayyari, Aw Shiyya, Asluha Intisarul Shay. What is the origin of parties and sets? So the Shaykh says the origin is whenever you have one party in trying to support something, support a thing, whether it's an ideology, whether it's a concept, whether whatever they are upon, they are supporting it. So you get people who aid. You see this a lot in, poli in, in politics, right? Where you get one group party support the leader that they're trying to stand behind and rally behind. You get another group supporting that leader that's standing rallying behind, right? That's the same thing you see with schisms and parties and sets. Each party get together to support the other one so that they can what? Rally behind them. You understand? So they can support them. So the also the origin is about intisal. Shiatul Falan, as it is said, he's a party of so and so. Our Ansarahu Fahum Shia, meaning that he aids and supports so and so. Right? The Salafi set brothers and sisters, this is what they do. They have tactics that are amazing. They have taxes where you are guilty by association. So according to them, any person who deals with anyone who isn't someone that they respect, someone they push or encourage, then that person becomes guilty by association to that organization or to that person. So to that person. So therefore you are supporting that party against our party. It's either you with us or you against us. It's a crazy concept, right? A crazy qaid, the principle, right? But this is the principle that the Salafi set have been working with for years. You can go back to their recordings. These are statements that they are similarly made. You either with us or you against us. This concept is not even known actually to be correct in Islam. You understand that? It's not known or correct in Islam. You might say, brother, no. The Prophet ﷺ said, whoever turns away from our sunnah is not from us. No, nah, the Prophet ﷺ made that clear. But he didn't say whoever with us is with us, whoever is against us is against us. It's not the same principle. Don't try to use that argument. So if he said, this is what they do. So the Sheikh, he says what? That's what a, the origin of it is that the party group, each group from amongst them is aiding whatever they are upon. They're strengthening it. Rather, he says, they don't even restrict themselves to just dividing. Rather, each one from amongst them call to that which they are upon. Do you understand? Pay attention. So he says that it's a necessity that is well known that whatever they call to which that they are upon, then it's a must. They must warn against that which oppose it. You know what I'm saying? They must warn against that which oppose it. So if I'm upon this, then I must end our, I must warn against what you are upon because it's not the same thing that I'm upon. Allah Jalla wa'ala blast all of this out. This is the quality from the mushrikeen. Allah gave us Islam so that we be one. Allah gave us the sunnah that we be one. He made the kitab and the sunnah to be the governed so that we be one. He made the model example of the Prophet wasallam and the companions so that we be one. So how in the world you got all of these masajids screaming salafir from the top of their lungs, but they're the most divided amongst the people? How in the world can this be possible? I say good riddance to the salafi set. That's what I say. Not to Dawah Salafiyya and not to the Fahm of Salaf Saleh. That's not what I'm saying good riddance to. I'm saying good riddance to the troublemakers amongst those who ascribe themselves to Salafiyya and has made it to accept. Good riddance. Goodbye. Because as I watch throughout the years, you change scholars like you change your sneakers. And I watch throughout the years that the scholars have put themselves into this rubbish and they have tarnished their reputation and Islam and makes you don't want to take nothing from them. How you have a lecture where one scholar gets up there, talk about another scholar at a lecture and tell the people at the lecture that this other scholar is two-faced. Where is this? Is that not personal? Ain't it Dalil? 
Is that not personal? You get at a lecture where they have a telelink where one scholar is talking bad about another scholar. What do you suppose to do in that situation? Then in turn, it caused the party who support the other scholar that's being talked about, they go crazy. That's what you're seeing right now on the Twitter wars. The Twitter wars right now, brothers, what you see with the illustrious duots, that's all they're worrying about. Bickering back and forth. Why? Because it's the Salafi set. That's all they're worrying about at the end of the day. Come on, man. Two hands of the same coin. Exactly what I call it. You hold a whole lecture where you want to talk about people. Ain't that ilm. Where's the dalil? That's not ilm. We sat with Shaykh Falah Hafidhu Rahmatullah Ta'ala Alayh. May Allah make his grave spacious. We sat with Shaykh Falah. Five of us. Me and four of the individuals. We mentioned to the Shaykh specifically about the fitna that was occurring between Shaykh Yahya Al-Jawri and Shaykh Ubaid Al-Jabir. Hafidhu Muhullah. Because both of them are still scholars. Whether they are high scholars or low scholars, that doesn't matter. I'm not no one who can remove that title from them. I'm not like Abu Khadija. I'm not going to say Yahya or Jory. That's very disrespectful. Regardless if you agree with the man or not. Regardless if you got 20 million scholars that is refuting him. You can't remove his scholarship. That's something you can't do. Do you understand? This is backwards. And this is what I'm saying. This is what allow me to do this. To, to, because this is how they work. This is how they've been maneuvering. You understand? You can't remove nobody's scholarship from you. People be tripping. You can't do that. That's disrespectful. Right? Just like you can't remove somebody being a father. Even if the person is a deadbeat father, he's still a father. Let alone what you, you can't remove the fact that he's the father of that child. What happened? The Prophet ﷺ used to call Zayd ibn, he used to be called Zayd ibn Muhammad. He used to be called Zayd, the free servant of the Prophet. ﷺ. He was called the son of Muhammad. ﷺ. But the Prophet ﷺ wasn't his real father. His real father come back, regardless of how he played the part in his life or not. That was his real biological father. What did Allah Jalla Wala says? Uduruhum li'abaihim. Call them by their father names. What did Allah say? Uduruhum li'abaihim. Call them by their father names. You understand? You can't remove that. How are you gonna remove Sheikh, a scholar? <laughs> How are you gonna remove that from somebody? People crazy, man. So you to go on Sheikh Falai said to us, he said, I don't listen to to the kalam of Sheikh Ubaid against Sheikh Yahya, nor do I listen to the kalam of Sheikh Yahya against Sheikh Ubaid. Allahu Akbar. You know what this taught me and the other four people that was with us? When it's personal squabble, because it wasn't deen. Sheikh didn't even deem it was deen. When it's personal squabble amongst scholars, don't even get involved. That's my position. Don't even get involved. Now, you can see clearly that it tarnish the dawah of individuals. You a scholar. Well, you know, this is supposed to be your pedigree. So we supposed to be taking you as example. Why would you take the time to speak about another personal problem with another personal scholar you have? What is the purpose of that? That's the same thing that these individuals are doing. And this is why they're doing it because, oh, we got scholar so-and-so with us. We got scholar so-and-so with us. But that tarnished the dawah. Do you understand? And don't say, brother, you're wrong. It's not tarnishing the da'wah. Okay, what did Allah tell Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? What did Allah Jalla Wa'ala say? Wala kunta what? If you have been ghalidun, fawqdun, min hawlik, have you been harsh-hearted with them, they would disperse from amongst you. Why? Harsh-heartedness will do what to you? It will cause your followers to leave you. That's who will. They would disperse. If the Prophet Wasallam was shown bad characteristics, bad traits, the people wouldn't have followed them. So here is I got a scholar and a telelink telling me X is so calling someone a two-faced person, right, who is another scholar, and you think I want to sit there and get finished listening to the scholar? No, I'm done. I don't want to listen no more. No, I don't. I don't want to listen no more. That's bad adab. Su adab. It's bad, and I'm leaving it off. That's the point. And it's going to make you want to leave it off. That's why Allah Jalla told Muhammad, have you been harsh-hearted with the people? They would have dispersed from amongst you. Do you not understand? So it's important. I'm not warning against scholar this or scholar A. So don't take my statement saying I'm warning against any scholar. I'm not. I'm just telling you I'm not joining into that party. That's a party I'm not joining into. Addy and all that. I'm not joining into that stuff. Do you understand? Those individuals are fitting. Well, the brother said there's no sound. I don't know. Maybe you're not hearing no sound. If anyone's not hearing no sound, let me know. Allah. But those individuals are a fitna. They are fitna that they keep the communities going. And that's what they've been doing to us. 
because we we are taught to respect the ulama. We are taught to have love for the deen. So what they do is they come in, they lay out a role plan, they go to a community, and you think the community has a stamp of approval. And that's toxic. Because if you think any individual, if you think any individual, alhamdulillah, if you think any individual can stamp your salafiyyah, something is wrong. If you think fulan and alan, this is not the Pope, ain't nobody Christian on top of you. No one, brothers and sisters, do you not understand what the Salat was set up for? Do you not understand what it is? You have a direct connection to Allah. <laughs> you don't even go through the Prophet to get to Allah. Yes, you have to follow his sunnah, but you don't have to go right directly to him. It's not that type of party. So if you're waiting for someone to come along to stamp your masjid, to stamp your community, to stamp you, and say, yeah, your Salafi is in check, your Sam. Something is wrong. And this is what we have been doing for years, waiting for a group of people to come by with their fitna to stamp us, to tell us that we are upon Dawah to Salafiyah. Who are they? Are we? Who are they? They don't even know if the, the version that they're following of Salafi is the correct version at all. They don't even know, so how can I wait? Alhamdulillah, no. It might be, it might be the actual mic that I'm using. So Tayyip, he goes on, the Sheikh, he mentions, he says, in terms of this, this is how they do, they divide, and he said reason why it's called his which is another thing we need to understand is because it is a group of people they are being given this because they unanimously agree either on an opinion or on a goal or on a deen so if they agree in these areas and they, are, and they, and they get together they come collectively when together they are his Understand? That's a his. They agree either on opinion, ideology, a goal, or aim they're trying to, you know, to, to, to strive for, or they agree upon a deen. Meaning each one from amongst it, meaning these parties, that yahzabu akhar, meaning that they be uh, they become a, a group to the other, uh, in terms by strengthening. Meaning according to that which they are upon. Meaning that was with them. Okay? Shaykh what they mean, Rahmatullah Ta'ala Alayhi. I gotta say this, because this is the, the part of it. He brings all of this stuff that I'm saying. He says, that كُلُّ هِزْبِ بِمَا لَدَيْهِمْ فَرِحُونَ He says, that تَبَقْنَاهُ الْآنَ عَلَىٰ حِسَابِ مَوْجُودِ وأن كل حزب فارغ بما هو عليه متمسك به مدافع عنه موهن لغيره وجدنا أن آية تنطبق تماما على ما يوجد الآن من أحزاب وسيما في الأمة العرب العربية أمة العربية الآن متحزبة كل حزب فارغ بما عنده لكن أمة الإسلامية لا تتحزب ينجح حزب واحد هو إسلام أتلت تلفت أوراؤهم هذا شافعي وهذا مالكي وهذا حنفي وهذا حنبلي وهذا ظاهري وما أسوأ ذلك لأن في الحقيقة متفقة لأن كل واحد من هذه الأحزاب لا يدلل آخر هي تجد ودنا شيء كثير منه. He said that if we was to apply this verse now, okay, and this is what he was allowed, and we were to look at the different groups and schisms that we find today, I hope y'all um can hear me. Can y'all hear me better now? We look at the different groups and schisms that we find today. He said each party is rejoicing to that which they are upon. And they are clean and firm to that which they are upon. And they defend their stance and their position. And they make a uh, censor and ill and, 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 and they uh, censor or speak ill of um, anyone who isn't a part of that party. Right? He says you will find that this ayat can be applied completely. It sounds different now. You can see that this ayat um, can be applied completely. That's what we see. Look at the Salafi set. Who worked well with them? All right? Who worked well with them? Maybe the mic is kind of messed up, but let's remove it. Who worked well with them? All right? You tell me. Who from amongst any community you know worked well with the Salafi set? And you know who I'm saying the Salafi set is. All right? Who worked well with them? I'll wait. Who you know? 
unless they endorse them. Who works well with them? We had two individual, two groups of people who come together into the city, and they're worrying about validating each other. That's all they worrying about. They did the same format, set up the same plan, and everybody keeps saying, "No, brother, what you're doing is wrong. You're speaking against this, this, and that." No, brother, y'all on the same stuff, man. Ain't nothing, ain't nothing, ain't nothing from that lecture brought about any higher to the community. I wait. And I'm not saying that y'all ain't going to get rewarded for whatever good that you intended, but it was the same rollout plan. That lecture, we're going to call a spade a spade, was going against the G. It was going against those other brothers that y'all fall out with. Now, they had that deal to you now, but you was just had that deal 10 years ago with them. Now, they had that deal because y'all don't see eye to eye. But then you make the community have to sit there. Now, it's Twitter wars because you sit there and do the telelink that making it go more crazy. Think about what's going on and y'all not paying attention. You do a telelink. Right? And the telling the scholar go crazy and he start talking about the other scholar the other side actually do. So it was an all out attack. So that lecture really was just about an attack. Not only what was amazing to me is that the scholar found y'all must have tipped him off. So the scholar found Tom to give a lengthy part of his talk by calling Tar here all types of deviants. No Dalil, just a rent. Just a rent. Sheikh Tabi went in a rent. Munharafi, just call him, call him a <laughs> Muqtadi, whatever. No Dalil. None whatsoever. And then after ask the thought, he goes at Sheikh Abdullah Bukhari. Now this is interesting. I want, I want you to see how interesting this is. You need to open your eyes. Look how interesting this is. Sheikh Abdullah Bukhari, who now warns against Sheikh Tahrir, again, right? Who now warns against him. Was just this man friend relatively about almost 10 years ago. He was recommending Sheikh Tahrir. I'm going to give you another big one. Tar here had a special seat in Sheikh Rabia house when he would come over. The Sheikh would bring him near, bring him close. All right? I'm not going to stop there. There are many other scholars like Sheikh Obey who had a respect for Tar here. So I have to ask myself, what changed? Tar is still the same individual. What changed from that relationship to now? And I thought about it. It's the poisonous individuals who we have in front of our community, who are backbiting that man, who are so jealous of that man that they went and stirred the commotion at the commotion among the scholars about one particular individual. That's sick, man. That's sick. You got a special seat for the man in your home. I mean, you recognize him. You recognize him. You understand? So you have a special seat, and then you go back and do what? It's, 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 you understand? It might sound like this, and if this is not the party for you, then that's the party. If it sound like it's gossip, then it's gossip. But this is really not gossip for me, and in terms of that, this is just showing you and opening you up. But I have to mention those details. I have to mention those details because it seems like you're not listening or not getting it, nor do you want to. You sitting there, you're not getting it. Everyone complaining. Oh, they going to war on, on, on Twitter. Everyone complaining on, on the internet. Oh, I know my dean, this, this, and that. Okay, when are you going to do something about it? Because you keep waiting for Somali to come validate you. All of us. All of us sitting there waiting for some man to come validate you. Waiting for this other person to come validate you. Where are you getting this stuff from? Validate you. Learn your dean. None of this will be an argument if all of us took, took our time out and learned our dean. Don't get mad at me. I'm going to sit here. I'm going to learn my dean. I'm not waiting on somebody to come teach me. I'm going to go learn my dean. Do the same thing. Learn your dean, I guarantee you'll be talking just like me. You'll be feeling just like I'm feeling. You'll be acting just like I'm acting. Why? Because you will see the nonsense for the nonsense. You will see the shape of team. You will see how it is. You tell me, two lectures that go crazy and everybody go crazy. Share the lecture, share this lecture. And all it was, a bunch of, a lecture from the onslaught. The lecture was to go against another group. That's all it was for. Do you not understand? The reason why I'm bringing up the Tarian situation is because I'm trying to show you that this poisonous, this poisonous, toxic community has been doing the same thing over and over. And until we throw them off, until we just say goodbye to them and forget them. And, and for those of you who want to ask me the question, well, what about that's your local masjid? What about that's the place you go to? Go to the masjid. Nobody telling you not to go to the masjid. Go pray. But you don't have to, you don't have to join in into their politics. You don't have to get yourself so involved with their politics. You don't have to do that. Right? You can go to their masjid. If that's your local masjid, pray. No one is telling you that. But don't get involved. 
Don't get involved. Don't argue with your friend. Don't argue with your sister. Don't argue with your brother. Don't argue with your husband. Don't argue with none of them about nobody from that camp. That's a Salafi set. And if you want to be a part of that, then you're wrong. But if you want to follow Dawah to Salafiyyah, and you want to follow that, then you will have fiqh, and you will try to apply these verses. Because these verses is telling us not to do what the mushrikun has done. That's what these verses is telling us. The Shaykh said if we apply that now, we will see especially now, this is something that we can see. Especially amongst the Arab communities. And the Shaykh, he's an Arab himself, so he's talking about the Arab communities. He said that the Arabs, they have broken up and divided into parties. Right? And we all can see that. You know, you, you got this party fighting for this, fighting for flags. You know what I mean? And not fight, fighting for countries and not really fighting for the deen. He says each party is rejoicing with that which is with them. He says, however, the Islamic Ummah does not divide into parties. Right? They are only one his, and that is Islam. Right? It doesn't matter what their opinion. It doesn't matter what they look like. It doesn't matter their skin. It doesn't matter. They are all one. No matter what region they're from, they are all one under the banner of Islam. They are all one. We're not talking about those who are deviants. Come on, man. We're not talking about that. But they're all one. He says, even if they differ in their opinions. For example, this person is Shafi. This person is Maliki. This person is Hanafi, this person is Hanbali, this person is Zahir, or similar to that. He says, He says, because even though they might follow a certain madhab, because these names he mentioned are all madhabs, which are permissible to follow, by the way. Um, there are certain conditions that you do not blind follow, but they are permissible to follow. He says, in reality, they all are in agreement. In reality, they all are in agreement. He says, Do you not pay attention now? And I'm glad that he mentioned this point. He says, because each of these groups are not putting the other one off it. They're not saying the other one is misguided. They're not saying the other one is a stray. They're not saying the other one is an innovator. They're not saying all of these different things. Do you not get it? What do the Salafi set do? Non-stop. He mudal, mudil. What do they do? Spear campaign. They got Shago Bade involved because of some personal thing that happened with Shadid. How long did that go on? I, I ask you, how long did that go on in the community? To now, it's still going on, right? Now, I mean, minbars. I mean, cook, we got cookbooks. We got famous cookbooks about Shadi Muhammad. Classes about Shadi Muhammad, right? That he's dull and mudil. Any Joe you ask right now, they don't even know Aleph Bad Tab. They don't even know the Al Fatiha properly. Know how to recite it. Ask them right now why you can't take from Shadi Muhammad. I guarantee you, most of them will say he's dull and mudil. Whether they understand these terms or not, they have run with these statements. How has this been plastered all over, right? This person putting this person off, this person putting this person off, this person putting this person off. And you tell me this is Islam that the Prophet Salaam came with? I'll wait. You tell me that this is Islam that the, the Salaf practice? I'll wait. Tell me. This is the same Islam that they practice. Oh, Haki, they warned against the people of Bida. Okay. The people of Bida, right? The people of Bida, that's what they warned against, right? The people of Bida. And how did they do it? What was the fit? How did they do it? How did they deal with the people of Bidah? Is it the same? Can any scholar come in front of us and tell us that so-and-so is a muqtadir? And we have to run with that? No. Absolutely not. There's no scholar that can say another person is a muqtadir. He doesn't have any dalil. And even if he has dalil, then there have to be conditions upon conditions that we accept it unanimously that this individual is that particular person. We ask Allah subhanahu wa to protect this man. Sheikh Dameen brings some beautiful kalam right here, man. Beautiful kalam. Because this is what we've been dealing with. Bunch of nonsense. Bunch of shayateens running around amongst the community and causing it to be toxic. Anytime you hear the word Salafi, you think it's a toxicity. I don't care who you is. You can act like you lying or you want. You know I'm telling the truth. Any one of us hear the word Salafi, it's, 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 you listen to it. It's like a, it's a toxic. It made people don't even want to say it. I got brothers I know they don't even want to use the word Salafi. They don't even want to use it. They made the name seem bad. They don't even want to use the name. Oh, you talking about those guys? They always staring at, oh, you talking about this? Because they're associated with something that's toxic. They have the most toxic community I've ever seen in my life. Well, lie they are, man. No productivity. Yeah, they buying buildings. So what? No productivity. That's only the building with their followers. No productivity. What productivity you see? Come on, man. Well, sitting here... Oh, yeah, we got this, we got that. We ain't got nothing, man. Man, donate and buy a whole building. The building just go. They sell the building. This happened and this happened. And you see this happen for years. 
10 years on a toilet or a bathroom. Yeah, we need 10 grand. We need 20 grand to fix the same bathroom in the same masjid for what, 10 years? So we need 10 grand? Come on, man. Call a spade a spade. I don't want to do that, but y'all y'all go at the crypt, y'all go at the pastors all day. Talk about the pastors having a new a new Cadillac or y'all go at all that day, all day, right? I don't want to talk about the, the local imam who calls in all the fitness. I don't want to talk about that guy, right? Who want to cause an all the fitness? Come on, man. Yeah. I'm going to talk about it. They don't got to like me. I'm going to let you know. Good riddance. The Shaykh says, rather you find an individual praising him. If a person differed with him, according to the dalil that is with him. Look what the Shaykh is saying. He said, if you come across an individual who differs with you based on evidence that he has, then you praise that individual. Allah. You're not at odds. You're not at war because you know his position against you is based off evidence. You're not at war. This ain't the time to chill right now, brother. This is the time to go in. So he says, Baal, inna hu yamda hu He says, Akala mu'min. He says that the believing, intelligent believer, haqqan huwa ladi ikala fahu gairahu, and muqtadila indahu la yakrahu bal yahmadahu. The intelligent believer in truth is the one when he finds someone other than himself opposing him, and it's based upon evidence that that opponent has with him. He says that he does not dislike him, rather he praises him. What does this sound like to you? Does this now sound like the Athar that is famous when the Salaf would say, I love my brother that will come to me and mention to me my flaws? Does that sound similar to that? That I love the person who will point out to me my flaws, the mistakes that I made, huh? Keeping me on point, bringing me up. Does this not sound the same? He says, rather he appraise him for this difference. <laughs> He said, because he doesn't differ with me because I'm so-and-so. He don't care if I'm so-and-so. He don't have a gripe with me because I'm Fulan. Or I'm this person. Or I got this reputation. Or I'm from this masjid. Or I'm from this side. Or I call to this. He doesn't differ with me on that. He differ with me because he believes that the truth that he has is with him. Right? He says, And he believes that this becomes a coming upon him. He says, He says, and he says it's incumbent upon every Muslim to follow the truth if it is made clear to him, even if someone differ, him, differ with him in that, because he has to follow the truth. Now, and I know you're going to say it's like contradiction here, but what if the brothers believe that the truth is with them? I know you're going to say that, right? What if the brothers believe honestly that what they're upon is the truth with them, right? And you know what I'm going to do to debunk that? If that truly was the case, right? Well, we have khutbahs going in on people, when we were following up each other's talks, when we were worrying about where Tahir is going to give a class at later so that we can counteract that, when we be going around worrying about what Shadeed Muhammad is doing and what community he's a part, when we be doing all of that, when we be inviting and having scholars on telelinks call another scholar two-faced it, when we be doing all of that, if it really truly was the hawk was with you, why is I going to argue with you? You know what the Prophet Muhammad did with Ali ibn Abi Talib? Famous, famous avatar that is mentioned in the tafsir. You know what the Prophet did? He came to Ali ibn Talib and he told him to pray the night prayer. He said, I can tell you something directly to something that you should do. You should perform the night prayer, right? So Ali, he made a statement, something that was considered flipping. He says, if Allah will, then I pray, right? So the Prophet he left Ali and he said that as he was leaving, he was hitting his thigh saying that indeed man is ever quarrelsome, right? The Prophet didn't go back and forth with Ali. Prophet did not go back and forth with Ali. And guess what? When we read the biography of Ali, it is mentioned in his biography that he didn't leave off the night prayer. Allahu Akbar. So if the haq is with you, why do I got to beat it down your throat? If the truth is really with you, and this is what you're saying you have, then why do I got to beat it down the other person's throat? Why do I have to beat it to everyone around? I don't have to do that. Right? There is a whole place that has been built right in front of our faces. And these people aren't even Muslim. They believe that there is another prophet besides the prophet of Allah. 
You don't hear no spirit campaigns as hard as you hear against Tar Heer Shadid and You don't hear it. I'll wait. Tell me when you heard the lecture. I'll wait. Tell me when you heard the spirit campaigns against this place. It's big right there in Philadelphia. And if you know, you know. Tell me, wait. I'll wait. When do you hear it? You don't even hear it, right? The people who are true deviants, you don't fight against them. You fight against your brother because his thobe is a little crisper than you. Because the scholars smiled at him more. Because they know his name more. Or because the people want to gravitate towards him. They had a problem with Shadid because he licked his lips and the female liked him. So that was a problem. That was the fitna. It wasn't no fitna other than that. It wasn't no, he's Munharif, he's deviant, he's that. No, he might, he's a human being. All right? That was the problem. And then you made it go across every community. Wallahi to this day is a part of every community right now that you can't take away certain personalities or it's going to be a problem. And you tell Malfeast, I'm tripping. I need to chill. Nah. These guys is out of pocket. These guys are out of pocket. And they're going to continue to be out of pocket if we continue to involve ourselves with it. So this is why I'm saying good, good riddance. And this is my last talk on this, this crap because it's crazy. Look what the Sheikh says at the end. He says, therefore, the Tariq, as we said before, there's only one. There's only one path. There's only one path, brothers and sisters. It's not two, it's not three, it's not four. It's only one path. Whoever's on that one path is who we with. Right? There's only one path. Well, the telephone the Sheikh he says, even if we differ in the methodology of how we might apply something, the tariq is only one. Do you understand? And why did he say that? He said, because each and every one of us are going to judge by the book and the sunnah. And each and every one of us believe that this is the truth. So why would I dislike my brother for different with me if what he has with him is the truth? Why would I have a problem with that? Why would I dislike him if he had what he had for me is the truth? If what he have is evidence, why would I have a problem with that? He says, Wallahu ta'ala yaqul. Allah Jalla wa'ala, he says, La yakallifu Allahu nafsan illa mus'aha. Allah Jalla wa'ala does not burden a person more than what he can bear. Na'am, the Sheikh said, yes. Man tabayna lahu al-haq, wa asarurra, wa anida. وعلمنا أنه مجادل بباطل فهذا ينزل منزلته وهذا هو ميزان في قولهم لا إنكار إنكار في مسائل الجهاد فإن هذه إبارة اشترهت على أوس لكنها ليس على إطلاقها لأن يعني مسائل الجهاد نوعان الشيخ is a teacher and I gotta finish after this after I translate his claim the, the, the talk is over the sheikh says الحمد لله ما لاش مال ميكس غير سبيشيس and he wasn't perfect he asked a lot of forgiveness for his sins I mean he says, whoever, the truth has been made clear to him, and he is persistent. Whoever, when the truth has been made clear to him, and he remained persistent to be in opposition of that truth, and he remained obstinate in opposition of that truth, then we know that this individual is someone who is argumentative. We know that this person is arguing, is, is debating with falsehood. So therefore, his position becomes clear to us. His standing, his position become clear. Well, the whoa means that of the him. And he said, this is the, the scale in regards to their statement that there is no censor to be made in matters of ijtihad. He says, however, this expression, this term, and this saying, he says, it is famous upon the tongue of the people, but it is not to be taken unrestricted. He says, because the masail ijtihad, when we talk about issues of ijtihad, brothers and sisters, of two types. The first type, he says it's the first one where it's possible in the ishtihad. In this case, he says that then there's no censor to be made therein. Why? Because each person who does the ishtihad, you've got to be able to level to make ishtihad, so we're not going to talk about that. None of your favorite dying brothers and sisters, by the way, can make ishtihad. Not Somali, not any of those individuals. They can't make it. Now, Tharib, none of them can make ishtihad, okay? So you want to say, I'm not being fair, Tharib, and, and Somali. I'm going to be fair with everybody. None of them of the menzala of being from the mushtahidun, all right? None of them of that level, okay? Not that I know of. And if they do, may Allah Jalla reward them. But none of them of that level to make ishtihad. So this doesn't pertain to them. Let's move on. He says, if he makes the ishtihad and he gets it correct, then he's going to get two rewards. 
If he doesn't and he makes a mistake in his ishtihad, then he's going to get one reward. And he said it's not eight, we're not possible to weigh everybody according to the same scale. Pay attention to this point. This is the most important stuff that I said. Not the rant and the banner, as the person said to me earlier. Not the gossip part. This is the most important part. This is the ilmi part. Pay attention to this part. He says, because knowledge of the legislative, the legislative ahkam, all right? Knowledge of the ahkam of the legislation, it varies, brothers and sisters, according to three things. It varies according to three things. According to a person's iman, to a person's knowledge, and a person's understanding. And you have to understand, not every student iman is on the same level. Not every student knowledge is on the same level, and not every student understanding is on the same level. So you cannot treat them the same. Do you not understand that? Likewise, not every scholar is on the same level. So you can't treat them the same. Likewise, not every am, every lay person. Do you not get it? And when we talk about the lay person, we have to understand that they do share a level together in regards to the fact of their ilm is that they, they're not at the level of a talib or alim, so they do share on that level. But when we're talking about iman, then it might vary. It's their iman varies. And faham, it varies. Do you understand? Pay attention to these three points. He says, He says, So when it comes to the knowledge about the, the ahkam of the legislation, then it varies according to these three matters. Right? From among the people, there are those who have iman that is pure. To the point that you see the truth is, he is upon the truth. That he sees the truth as it is. This person, iman, is so crystal clear that he can see the truth as it is. And then it's open for him the door of guidance. And then from among mankind, there are those who, his iman have some weakness. So therefore he has a covering that screens him and blocks him from this guidance according to the deficiency of his Iman. Therefore, the Iman atharun kabirun hatun fil ilm. He says that Iman has a tremendous effect in regards to a person's knowledge. And then he brings the famous statement of Iman Shafir when he says, Shakautu ila waqi'in su ahibli farashadani ila tarakil ma'asui waqal this famous statement that we all heard before came across. I complain, Iman Shafi said. And anybody know Iman Shafi biography? They used to say that he had to really put his hand over one side of the book or one side of the page so that he won't memorize the other side. So his memory was strong, by the way. I just want you to know that. He had a strong memory. But look what he said. He said, I complain to Akir about my poor memory and he directed me to leave off sins miles he says and then he says no that knowledge is light and the light of Allah is not given to one who is a disobedient person right famous thing and Allah Jalla says Shaykh Abdi says in Surah Al-Anfal the 8th chapter of the Quran Allah says oh you who believe if you fear Allah Allah will make for you a furqan Shaykh Uthaymeen says, This distinction cannot happen except with knowledge. So the people differ tremendously in regards uh, to their iman and their taqwa. They're not all the same. They're not. Allah leveled the believers into three tiers. Allah leveled mankind into three categories. Do you not see that? Allah talks about the soul into three. Pay attention. So it let us know that there are levels. Understand their hadith, the Prophet ﷺ talks about the prophets being on different stations and different stations of heavens. Right? A lot the Prophet ﷺ tells hadith about what? Different rooms and different stations. There are degrees. Things vary. There's an ayat in the Quran where Allah tells us about the prophets and the messengers that he made some greater than others. He prefers some greater than others. They sort of Isra. Do you not understand? They're not on the same level. So stop. We're not on the same level. Likewise, the people differ in regards to their knowledge. For example, the Sheikh said, we have two individuals. One of them, he knows and have knowledge of the books of the Sunnah, like Bukhari and Muslim and other than them. 
from the books of the sun. The second one doesn't know anything from the books of the sun. Therefore, we know that the first individual out of these two individuals is what? The first one is more knowledgeable about the sunnah than the other individual, right? Because the other one don't know nothing about the sunnah. So he mentioned it. He says, what's that? The third thing that we need to understand that the different is faham. I believe that the Salafi set, brothers and sisters, and I'm going to go on the limb here, but I honestly believe that the Salafi set, brothers and sisters, suffer from this one more than anything else. Is their faham. Wallahi to lahi, wallahi, I have seen how the brothers been moving for years. And it's seen when I look at people who are more knowledgeable than me. People who have a more understanding of the deen, and Allah have blessed them with fiqh, they handle the situation totally different than when I see how the brothers handle the situation. And the brothers, they are so crazy, the shaitan is so crazy, that when the brothers know they made an error, they will never retract the fact that they made the error. Do you understand? They won't retract that they made the error. They just blow it over or throw it under the rug. No, it's an error. You ain't supposed to do that. An individual told me he's up there with the sheikh and he's in Mecca. Y'all know this brother. I'm not going to mention his name, but he gave me this beautiful story. He said we was with the sheikh and we was taught that, you know, people pray a certain way. This is bid'ah and these people upon bid'ah. And the sheikh says to them, what proof do you have that these individuals upon innovation? This is what the sheikh says to them. But you know, they fresh from Philly. So they going over there, they studying with the scholar, they fresh from Philly, so they got that Philly mentality. They got that mentality from the brothers. You know, everything that don't look right and doesn't move how we move or understand, it's good though. <laughs> Tell me you don't feel like that. You don't walk around talking about, yeah, my radar, my radar is, is tingling. Tell me you don't feel like that. You walk in a farm master today, tell me you ain't thinking that the, the, the people in that farm master is upon Philly. Tell me that thought didn't come to your mind. Don't lie. Tell me the thought didn't come to your mind. Yeah, these people must be named on the Sunday here. That's the first thing you think default, right? They ain't from the Sunnah. They can be more knowledge with you about the Sunnah than you. But that doesn't even matter. You know in your mind and in your heart, you feel that these people aren't on the Sunnah. That's what you feel. And where do you get that from? This toxic community. The toxic community who is not really teaching you, right? They're not teaching you. They're conditioning you. Two different things. They're not educating you. They're conditioning you. And yet you don't understand that. You don't understand you've been conditioned. Not that you've been educated. If you have been educated, then you would understand that not everything you see, you judge right directly. You have to have fahm of situations and understand this to know. Just like Sheikh Shola Ali Sheikh explained to us. Every bid'ah is mukhalafa sunnah wala, right? Wala kullul mukhalafa sunnah bid'ah. Principles that we haven't been taught. The Sheikh, he says that every Every innovation, no matter how small it is, is in opposition to the sunnah. But not everything that opposes the sunnah is an innovation. Allahu Akbar. Not everything that opposes the sunnah, brothers and sisters, is an innovation. The Prophet may not have done that. He may not have sanctioned that. But it's not innovation. But to us, we're taught that if it don't look this way, if it doesn't appear this way, and if it's not stamped and endorsed by this, then it got to be off it. Something is wrong. Come on, man. Wake up. Alam, open your eyes. Faham, allow you to apply it correctly. You cannot practice Islam if your faham is messed up. I don't care who you is. If you have suhum faham, you're not going to practice Islam correctly. I don't care who you are. Ask Allah to grant you fiqh, brothers and sisters. That's what you need to be asking me for. Look what the shaykh he says. And I'm going to stop here because as I said, I was going to translate just this part because this is the most knowledge part. He says, Hatta in the nas. Look what he says here. He says, He says, He says, He says, Ali Ali ibn Abi Talib. Ali, Ali ibn Abi Talib, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. For this reason, when it was said, it was said to Ali ibn Abi Talib, Hal ahida ilaykum wa nabiyu sallallahu sallam bi shay. That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and trust that you were covenant with anything. إِلَيْكُمُ عَهْدَ نَبِيُّ صلى الله عليه وسلم بشيء قال ما أهد إلينا بشيء إلا ما في هذه الصحيفة أو فهم يؤتيه الله تعالى في القرآن He says that the Prophet ﷺ has not entrusted us, made a covenant with us with anything except in regards to the صحيفة or فهم the comprehension which Allah جل وعلا has given a person in regards to the Quran. He says, وَلَا شَكْ أَنَّ النَّاسِ يَكْتَلِفُونَ فِي فَهْمِ 
Sheikh so Hasimin said, no doubt the people differ greatly in regards to their comprehension. And to the point that a person, that there could be one text, a person could be reading one book, and there are some people, yeah, hold up, I'm almost done. And there are some people who yastambi to minhu ashra masa'id, meaning talking about scholars. There are some scholars who can read that one text and extract from it over 10 issues. Then there's another scholar who can come and only extract only two or three issues. Then is a third one that come, and a wa a person who will actually read to you the hadith, right? And wa alaykum right? Meaning that in terms for you to extract, the hasil, he says in summary, and the people differ greatly, brothers and sisters, in regards to this. أهل السنة والجماعة ومسلمون أموما يقولون إن اختلاف في الأراء ليس اختلاف في الدين لأننا كلنا على هدف واحد ولا يضل بعضنا بعضا إلا ما علم حق وتبين له وعلمنا أنه معاند. Listen what he's saying, man. Wallahi, man, it's hard. I can't follow the salaf he said because it's clear to me. It's not because of shikrat they mean, but this is clear. This agreement the kitab and the sunnah. Look what he's saying here. He says that the people differ. He says because أهل السنة and the Muslims in general. They say that people, we differ in regards to opinions. But we do not differ in regards to the deen. We differ in regards to opinions. But we do not differ in regards to the deen. Because each and every one of us is upon the same aim. We are upon the same goal. And we do not cause or say that someone else is astray from amongst us. You off it. You off it. Look what he says. Well, you done we do not pit each other off it. We do not make one another be misguided. Do you understand? The Shaykh didn't call Tar here so many deviants. The brother, it's funny because the brother said he used the word in haraf and every <laughs> in every way or every conjugation of the verb. I found it funny because if you know Arabic, you know that there are different <laughs> wesons or scales to the verb, right? But he was calling the Shaykh, he was calling Tar a deviant. Right? It's funny in multiple ways. It's not funny that he called that he called it the brother deviant. But the fact that he was a saying he was Munharafi and Haraf and all that with no Dalil was just non-stop. A whole telling. Right? That he's given and he's calling this man a deviant. In any way you can think of, right? He says, with no Dalil. He said they don't pit each other off it. Illaman Ali except for the one that knows the truth and has been made clear to him. And if he remains persistent and obstinate to the truth, in spite of it, but who is to make up how long a person is to be an obstinate? This is something that we have to practice patience. You could be talking to your main man. You could be talking to your wife. How long your wife probably don't want to take something from you in this hop? She hear it from so and so and so and she take it. You could be talking to your main man, your main sister. She don't take it from you as the hop. Don't you understand sir, how certain things is, certain relationships are? Something can be the truth and a person can be denying it because it's you bringing it to them. They got nothing to do with it being the truth. You don't understand that? Right? A person can actually be opposing something that might be the truth, but he's not opposing it or she's not opposing it because it is the actual truth. They're opposing it because it's the person who's bringing it to them. Do you not understand that? So how long do we wait? How long do we wait? How long do we give this grace period to a person? Do we really want to say that, yo, the brother, I did everything I could do. He's a, he's a, he's a mutadi. Right? He's an innovator. How long do we supposed to wait? You understand? You can't do that, man. It's scary if we start calling and pitting everyone off it. And that's what we're seeing right now. Everyone is just so pure. Everyone, the Salafi set is so pure. No one's makes a mistake from amongst them. And everyone that don't agree with them is off it. You tell me. I challenge you. Show me something different. Show me it. Even the scholars they got, they getting into the bicker and stuff. So show me something different, man. It's nothing different. I say good riddance with those people, man. They have toxic community. They are bad for my deen, they are bad for the practice of my deen, and they are bad for the community. They lack empathy, they lack sympathy, they lack compassion, they lack mercy, they lack the, the ability of thick and understanding. They lack these things, they lack knowledge, they lack the practice of knowledge. They have caused havoc and devastation in every community they be in it, and they have come across. These individuals are cancerous. They are rabious. And you might say, brother, you're going extreme. No, they really are. That's how it is. Because when you got a cancer, you can't get rid of it. It's hard to get rid of it. It's just certain you have things you have to do to get rid of it, right? To the point that they're looking for different effects now so that you don't lose your hair for the treatment they give to get rid of that cancer. Sometimes if, they, if, if it's just 
If it's stuck in one part of the body, they have to amputate the limbs. This is how poisonous this stuff is. Once you get a latch in the community, it's hard to let it go. You tell me how many years we haven't let this stuff go. You tell me how many years we haven't got rid of it. I'll wait, you tell me. All because you wanna keep saying your main man is this person, and your main man is that person. That man is toxic. You understand? He's toxic. Just like you say about a relationship, you better say that about them. They're toxic. That man is toxic. When he get on that minbar, Fulan and Alain. We had a speech sound all flowery, but he's talking about somebody. When he stands and goes and gives his class, he's talking about somebody. You, you understand? There's no Islam being there. That's all it is. You know the people upon the Sunnah, that they are like this. The people upon the Sunnah are like this. So I guess you are the people upon the Sunnahs. So then they started making lists. You didn't even pay attention to what was going on. They was conditioning you. They started making lists and putting down names of people that they recognize. So I guess whoever didn't make the list, they off it, right? Think about it. They threw a whole list and said that our brothers from so-and-so, Ben Bass, they stand behind us. Our brothers from so you didn't see the tweet? Our brothers from such and such community stand behind us, right? And then they got fake accounts. I mean, this is real. So then they put up all of this stuff up. But then it leaves you to think that what they're saying indirectly, that every person that they didn't mention within that talk or within that tweet then they're saying that that mass shit is off it <laughs> and you can't make this stuff up man this remind me of something that Sheikh um rahmatullah ta'ala alayhi one of the uh, major scholars in uh yemen his name is eluding me right now but he gave 25 i think points about jahwa ta'adir and it, it reminds me of this and he was talking to the students of knowledge and he was saying that if you get involved in this issue and it's not your issue. You're not a specialist of it. He said the shaitan is going to cause you to separate. It's going to cause you to become divided. And that's what I see with these brothers. These brothers started taking a science that's in hadith. And they start applying it everywhere. I mean a, a brother who haven't got no mastery of anything. You don't master the Arabic. He doesn't master anything. I'm not talking about your pronunciation of the Arabic. I don't even look at that as taught. You know what I mean? He's just weird for that. You know I mean a man came to Iman Shafi talking about his grammar. You know, reading this about grammar, about grammar. I mean, you ask him, what's the akam and such and such? He couldn't give you the akam and such. What's important? You think Allah Jalla is worried about whether or not you stutter with your tongue? The Prophet said, actually, a person who stuttered reciting the Quran get two rewards. What's the point of that? People make art. He can't even say the Arabic right. He can't pronounce the Arabic right. So what? Is he worshiping Allah? Is he getting closer to Allah? So what? Is it an impediment with his tongue? So what? That's not even big. That's not a big deal. Unless he changed the meaning. You understand? Unless he's changing the meaning. But it's not a big deal. It's not something you make talking of someone because of a person pronunciation, you don't make talking of them. But anyway, these people are not skilled in the way that they behave with one another is atrocious. They behave. You tell me all of these brothers weren't just friends a week ago. And what I mean by a week ago, it might not mean a literal week, but tell me they wasn't all just friends. I'll wait. All of them. I'll wait. All of them. Can you not remember a time Shadid was at Germantown giving a, a talk? I can. You can't remember that time? You can't remember the time Shadid was there? You can't remember the time Tari was there? You don't remember the time Munir was there? Tell me, just stop. You don't remember a time that any of those brothers was at Germantown. Any of those brothers was with Abu Hassan Malik. He was cool with all of them. You don't remember all of this? You don't remember this. You don't remember the time that Abu, um, Abu Khadija was cool with um, Shadid Muhammad? You don't remember this, right? Yes, you remember this. So if all of these people were cool, what changed? Wallahi, brothers and sisters, Wallahi, what change? Personal grief and beef from the shaitan that caused dissension amongst the people. That's what changed. It wasn't the Akita of any of these brothers and questions that changed. It wasn't the Akita. The Akita didn't change. They just believed that they can go about a certain way of doing a certain thing. All right? And that's what it is. It wasn't the Akita. The Akita didn't change. They still believe in the Dawah to Salafiyah. Right? They're not running around at the top of their lungs screaming. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, man, really to protect us and get rid of these people, man. Get rid of the cancer that they have and allow us to move on. And you are a brother that live in a community with a toxic community. If the masjid is your local masjid, go pray. I tell you, don't get involved with their politics. Don't get involved with who on and who off it. Don't support their party. Don't support it under no circumstances. Give the salams. Pray and keep it rolling. Do you understand? Don't stand in a party of when they backbiting another individual. I don't care what Dalil they say they bring. Do not join in. I don't care if they say Sheikh so-and-so said it. Do not take it. 
Do you understand? Why? Because it is nothing but toxic. It's nothing but toxic and it's not beneficial. It is non-beneficial to your dean. Do you understand? And to your community. And it's going to cause you to have bad feelings towards another Muslim who Allah might love and might raise above you. Keep it moving. That's the same go for you sisters. That's the same go for you spouses. That's the same go for you friends. Let's keep it moving. We're not going to get rid of these guys, but we can get, we cannot involve them. That's how we overlook them. They are a sect, brothers. You can argue with me all you want. They are a sect. Anyone that's with them, get love from them. Anyone that's not with them, do not get love from them. That's not Islam. Do you understand? That's not Islam. If you are a Muslim and you believe in Allah, you believe in the oneness of Allah, you believe in the Sunnah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, even if you are deficient and flawed in the way that you carry that out, you are a Muslim, you're under the umbrella of Islam. I'm not talking about if you're a deviant and you're a bona fide deviant and you believe that there are other prophets or anything like that, or you believe that Ali, suppose I have the, uh, the manuscript and that Abu Bakr stole it, I'm not talking about all that crazy stuff. Or you're a Sufi and believe that you reach a certain mental I'm not talking about all that crazy stuff. I am talking about real love talk. If you are believing in the Kitab with Sunnah understanding of the Fahm and Salaf, then know for surety that you are all under the same umbrella. And you don't have to bicker with somebody because they don't they don't agree with you. Whatever we said that was incorrect in our translation, of course there's a lot of benefit in here. We it's definitely for myself and Shaitan. What we said is correct from Allah Jalla wa Ala. Last but not least, I pray for all of the brothers who have been horned, all of the families that have been horned do this ordeal for the last 25 years or even 30 years or so I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect you and raise your ranks know that there's no one from amongst the creation except that you're going to be someone who's different you can't please everybody I pray I, mean, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to really shelter them and engulf them and in the end we will know who is who Allah is going to inform everybody what you have done in the end we will know who is who we will know who the people are truly working and we know the people are causing truly corruption alright doesn't matter what they call we ask Allah subhanahu to uh, raise our ranks and forgive us all. We tube it in Allah, he tube it in the Surah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa